This is the Fossey Audio GR40. It's a tube headphone amplifier as well as a DAC. In fact, audiophile grade DAC. That's not the only thing. There's something that no one is talking about about this that I really think you need to know if you're interested in purchasing this. So let's go ahead and test it out and tell you exactly what you need to know about this. Now, the first thing that I loved seeing was, of course, that bronze that Fosse is known for. Now, they put that around the tubes and they also put that on the volume knob, which is also how you switch modes and turn on and off the device. Now, one of the things you might also notice is that it's the exact same chassis as their V3 monos, meaning that you can stack these up on a desk to take up minimal space or if you want to put these like underneath a monitor, uh, they have very low height and you could put these right next to each other. Once again, taking up minimal space. And I really appreciate that about the GR40, although I really wish they would have went with a bigger size in this. And we'll know why when I turn this around. As you look on the back, there are a few inputs. There's of course Bluetooth. I did test that out and I could go to either end of the house and I did not lose signal on it, it still played. It has a really nice long antenna for Bluetooth. It does have a USB DAC. Now that DAC is an audiophile grade DAC. That's something that they put in this year, which is a huge improvement. Although there's something that we need to talk about that in just a minute. But before that, let's talk about what it's capable of. It's capable of a 32-bit, 384 kilohertz and DSD to 12. There are also both digital fiber optic and digital coax inputs. But as far as outputs, the only output it has is RCA unbalanced output. And that's where I find things to be a little bit disappointing. I really wish they would have went with a little bit bigger chassis and added some balance outputs as well. Uh, if we take a look at the V3 mono, they do have the balanced inputs and that would just be the perfect pairing uh, for something like those if we could go balanced. But as it is right now, if you're gonna be using something like the V3 mono or anything for that matter, you're gonna have to use unbalanced outputs. Now this is a tube amplifier and DAC and I love that. One, aesthetically, it just looks amazing. Especially when you turn the lights off, you see that orange glow. I really like that, but it also changes the way things sound. Now, tube amplifiers and DACs will add more warmth to the sound quality, and every tube that you put in can actually make a difference in sound quality. Thankfully, Fosse used some of the most well-known and easy to accumulate tubes on the market, meaning that if you wanna change out your tubes, you can easily go to Amazon, or other places where you buy your tubes and you can swap those out relatively easily. And that's really good because the first thing that I wanted to do was test out the headphone amplifier portion on it. Now, if we turn around the front, we can see where we plug in the headphones. Once again, this is a 3.5 millimeter jack. I think that's once again, due to the size that they wanted to keep this. Uh, so you don't have your one quarter inch jack uh, you will either have to convert that to a 3.5 millimeter or use headphones that have a 3.5 millimeter input on it. Now, the good thing about this is this does auto defeat to that headphone. So as soon as you plug those headphones in, it will play via the headphones. It does have a uh, bass and treble knobs as well, which I did test out. And it was important that I did that because when I plugged up my Bare Dynamics, which are 80 ohm headphones. Now this says that it will power up to 300 ohm headphones. When I plugged up the Bear Dynamic headphones to it and listened to them, they sounded a little high pitched. They didn't sound as warm as I thought. And I was uh, missing that warmth that I usually get from a tube amplifier. Now keep in mind, these headphones are already tilting towards the high end. So that's somewhat to be expected. I turned up the bass a little and all of a sudden it did bring that warmth in and of course brought that low end back. Now the first thing that I was really interested in was how well it was gonna power those headphones. I have kids, so I need to be able to get rid of some of those background noises. I was able to turn this up and it was not only clean, but it got loud enough to drown out that background noise. Now, having said that, if I needed to drown out that background noise and wanted to use a higher impedance headphone, I don't think I would have been able to do that. 80 ohm was pretty much the sweet spot for that. And if you want to um, listen to higher impedance headphones, you could do that, but it's going to limit the output power, which means that you won't be able to get it nearly as loud. And so for environments that 
are quieter, I think you could go up to like 150 and still have a really good experience with it. After that, I'm not sure that it would have the power that I would personally want for the higher impedance headphones. Now I wanted to see exactly how we could turn up and down the treble and bass on this and what it did. Now testing out the treble, it does give us plus or minus seven decibels. And on the bass, we get plus or minus 10 decibels. So there's a really wide variation to get your speakers or headphones really tuned in to how you want them to sound, especially when you pair that with changing out the tubes. With all of my tests, I used the USB DAC, and this is where things got a little interesting. For this, you use a USB-C cable and you plug it up to your computer. Now I'm using a Windows-based computer, and when I plug this up in there, uh, I go to my sound settings to be able to configure my DAC. Now, typically when you configure a DAC, you can choose the sample rate that you want it to play. That's where things got a little bit interesting. This registered as a headphone amplifier and not as a DAC. And because of that, you couldn't change the sampling rate. This obviously concerned me, so I contacted Fossey and said, hey, look, I can't change my sample rate what's going on with this, and they informed me that it is just auto set up to do that, and that it will play 384, a 32. Unfortunately, I can't confirm that because I can't make the setting adjustment in the computer. So for this, we're just gonna to have to trust Vossi Audio. Now, I did test this as well with some speakers, and I was very impressed with the sound quality out of it. Once again, it does add that little bit of warmth that a lot of us like out of those tube amplifiers. So with all of this in mind, if this is what you're interested in, go ahead and check the buy links down in the description of the video, and make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video as well. This is Toyd, and I'm out.